scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ Be wants set. you to attain. Thank you. So when we organize crusades, you see many believers who say, you know what, we want to organize crusades. Then we go and bring one powerful man of God pay for his flight i'm not saying there's anything wrong in that i'm saying it is just how how bad our orientation has been so those souls are at the mercy of the arrival of that man and if joshua selman decides to be too proud to come and says i'm not coming those souls remain at the mercy of one man's arrogance yet you read your bible everybody paul saw was a potential harvest in prison when they bound him he was not thinking about his release he was thinking about the person to be saved are we together as soon as they were free listen as i'm talking to you there is an impartation of a grace that will come upon your spirit man that you will never see unbelievers and be quiet there is a fire that burns within your spirit your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King is resurrecting me by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king isn't it amazing that we have played politics with the global harvest isn't it amazing we have played celebrity with the global harvest apostle joshua selman the great man of god you can talk about that with respect to other things but not the salvation of souls that business is too serious for the carnality and unseriousness and childishness that continues to plague ministry there are people today who should not have gone to hell but they have gone to hell because the person mandated to be the reason for their salvation watch them in carelessness How many campus students graduated without fulfilling the quota of the salvation that was allotted to them? How many prayer groups? How many men of God? Did you know that God measures a thousand cubits? There is an allocation of souls that everybody who desires to be a laborer is given per time and per season. Don't show me the building you are trying to build. Thank you. But leave that is secondary. Don't show me the project. Don't show me the car you want to buy. Thank God for it. Show me how many souls daily. Show me how many souls weekly. Show me how many souls monthly. Listen, look at me. If you bring a soul winner today that nobody knows on social media, a soul winner today who is not a celebrity and you bring him to stand here 
and then you bring Joshua Selman the one that people Praise the Lord. Thank you. Are we together now? So you bring a serious soul winner. No influence, no crowd, nobody knows him, no honorarium, and then you bring Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Chances are excellent that when you look at two of us, honor is accorded to the celebrity people that you see, and it has put pressure on people many people who were getting it right have turned to start getting it wrong because there is a narrative we are giving that if men do not celebrate you and you are not all over social media and you are making impact and making headlines you are not doing well i'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things but there were people who were sincere their passion was unadulterated they were not looking for a name they were looking to see this mandate come to pass and the pain now is that there are many younger ministers learning some of these things when they began to walk with god it was never about crowd from their lowly estate some of them on campuses some of them they were choir directors when they started having their encounters now they've left all the old notebooks that they used to write things with the holy ghost they don't even know where it is now in search for a celebrity lifestyle Isn't it amazing that we hold massive crusades that are full of unbelievers? We talk, we sing, we dance for hours. Then we make an altar call and only two people come out. That is a report card to tell you the kind of laborers we are. And you know, not by word of knowledge, that that place is truly full of unbelievers who need Jesus. What kind of gospel are we preaching? that a sinner is there for hours we claim we are charging the atmosphere and at the end of it that man is not convicted go to Acts chapter 2 and read what happened to the people when broken vessels preach the gospel let it be known to you O Israel said Peter that this same Jesus you have crucified has now been exalted as Lord and Christ the Bible says they were caught to the heart the same thing that happened to the two men that were going to Emmaus that every time there was a communication of the gospel men were caught to the heart not condemned but that there was such an imprint of the spirit and they said men and brethren what do we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children to as many as are far off even those that the lord your god will call can i tell you men of god we have a serious repentance to do in this conference the first repentance is not seen as the first repentance beginning from the person talking to you this is not tell them that we cry before the lord and say lord help us your father died an unbeliever you never preached to him but you collected money from him and you you gave him you were quick to market the invitation of your building project because that one affects your ego directly isn't it we are proud to give posters please don't get me wrong I'm not shaking you to condemn you isn't it amazing that we are bolder over other things but not salvation if at the end of this meeting nobody shouts nobody falls under the anointing nobody does anything maybe I come and preach very simple no Greek no Hebrew no nothing and I make an altar call you will most likely live disappointed if they ask you how is that meeting you say I, I, I expected more what you meant was that it does not matter who is saved or not let there be power let me see miracles let me see blind eyes open and if salvation does not happen you are a great man of god we must reorient ourselves again because this please come and help me on this this lack of proper orientation is raising a young generation that is ignoring god the content of people's fasting and prayer is never about souls and the program of God. It's Lord, take away shame from my life. Give me power too. Let people know that I have power. And there is nothing wrong with that. I remind you, 
those you call god's generals were first god's missionaries they were god's evangelists they were god's emissaries hallelujah i can now give the nations to you oh lord that's the cry of my heart this shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us see when i when i was brought from the airport and while i was in the car I was looking at all the people the organization and everything i was so touched in my heart and as my car was moving i was watching the protocol all moving in order and i nodded my head i said this is what destroys our generation celebrity joshua selman he has arrived and there are many young people that is all they are emulating somebody can watch that scenario and go and do a seven days dry and say because of that oh god what happened to this man must happen to me i want what is it about I... listen ladies and gentlemen we have repentance to do this night so don't be offended but if it is genuine revival you want to see in enugu state we must cast our golden crown i'm not saying you are not doing well but we must cast it and say lord there is something wrong with our spiritual orientation can i tell you our fathers did not have a lot of revelation but they had passion for souls that's the reason why when you read about men like apostle babalola and some of your fathers who have gone to be with the lord they don't know the things we know now in truth but my goodness they saw signs and wonders because their uh, their intention was not fame their intention was not miracles their intention was not celebrity all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted every time i pray i pray for myself i say lord deliver me from the foolishness of pride the deceit of fame and the distraction that comes with popularity mundane distractions people clap and i'm saying there's, there's there's a place for honor but i'm telling you if you know god and you have met god nothing else will satisfy you nothing <laughs> if it is the god of the bible you met i don't care what you have before that time there is a hunger that only the size of God can feel in a man. Ministers of the gospel, when you understand God, you will see that there's no reason for competition. Competition is proof that there was a problem before that time. The problem is the, there, there is an orientation that naturally leads to competition. Are we together? There are souls in Enugu at the mercy of serious laborers as god grants me the grace to travel from nation to nation i thank god for all the bits that god is doing in my life but i'm telling you for me or oh, this man you see died since i graduated from doing ministry since and i started serving the king with my heart sincerely i'm telling you i'm not just here to come and bamboozle and I'm, no 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 that I see somebody that Jesus died for that you can translate that person I've had the honor of being at the deathbed of a few people I've seen them moments before they would die and the moment I go to pray for people maybe cancer whatever and you see them happy ah, apostle has come meaning miracle has come my first spot of call is to get this man saved first that way I have the confidence it does not matter what happened if the person closes his eyes to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord ladies and gentlemen I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his money I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his business card I do not know anybody who has gone out of the earth with his certificate 
I do not know anybody who carried this building project that you are arguing about out of the earth. If the trumpet sounds today, my suit does not matter. My English does not matter. The, the invitations and the social medias does not matter. The only thing that matters, the hymn writer used to say, must I go and empty handed? He says, must I meet my savior soul? This generation does not even know that hymn again. He says, not one soul with which to greet him. He says, must I empty handed go? Some of you, it was under those atmospheres you were raised before some of us came as men of God and started deceiving you and took away your passion away. Let there be a restoration of that genuine fire. It was those days we used to sing songs like, I pledge allegiance to the land with all my heart, with all I am, I will seek to honor his command. I pledge allegiance to the land there were people who would never sleep until one soul were saved a father in the lord that the geo baba boy when he clocked 80 he made a request and he said for the remaining part of his life knowing that the time is not too long again that the only thing he wants not cars not houses the only thing he wants is to give God eight million more souls. After that, he'll be ready to go home. And it is that vision that brought up the light of crusades that you see. Eight million souls. I remember Reinhard Bonke in his final days, when he came and had his final crusade in Lagos. He went back and all he was concerned about was souls. The man you call Billy Graham who became like a spiritual advisor to kings he did not start by looking for fame he sought for jesus and he sought to see him revealed in many lives and god translated him to a sign and a wonder hallelujah and you hear me nobody will win these souls that we see and live except us but we should not get God to a point where because of our carelessness, you will start seeing unbelievers that in one month, God will train because of the vacancy we have given. Let God not have to start going to bring madmen in Gadara to win 12 cities because the saints are not ready. Let God not have to start using prostitutes at the well to go and say, come see a man because many people there are unbelievers you will see who God will be training them while he's using them because the, the king's business requires haste. Listen, my first assignment tonight is to bring the burden of the spirit to you to tell you that according to God's ranking of honor, you are very small except that the size of your souls increase your ranking. Jesus himself was so important he took the issue of souls so serious he had to account for all the souls that were given to him and for the one who was lost he accounted john 17 please sit down he had to account for those souls what did paul know that even in prison Ladies and gentlemen, if you are bound in prison and you come out of that prison, I don't know about you, but if I come out of prison, I will run out of that city and run home, not Paul. As soon as from the prison, the jailer wanted to kill himself. He said, no, we're a potential harvest. You and your house. We are here. We are safe. All I'm concerned about, he said, what do I do? He said, now you're talking. Take me to your house. He saw the lady with divination. He was not thinking a potential church member. Uh -uh. This lady is used by the devil and there has to be deliverance for her. And he got her saved. They got flogged. That's how they got into the prison. Everybody they saw 
if you made a mistake of giving Paul even if he was 10 minutes to preach you were in trouble when he stood before Felix he stood before Agrippa he said thank you for the opportunity it's not dying that is my scare just allow me say something and the king said you almost convinced me hallelujah every time I go to sleep I hear the cry of many who need Jesus I literally hear the cry is the Spirit of God waking me to say thank you son for what you are doing but there is more and that more cannot be done by one man I can tell you the days of celebrity is drying it's going down by the Spirit of God because you see if all we keep doing is marketing this celebrity Christianity it is a risk for the people themselves we will destroy their focus destroy their consecration put the people they are mentoring under pressure because it will now look that anybody who wants to become like Joshua Selman is not thinking of having your passion is thinking of having your influence and while that is important that is only relevant when your heart condition is right let me until we go to the tonight I'm dealing with the global harvest when we now get to the kind of vessel that God is building there is a kind of believer you must become to do business with God but ladies and gentlemen hear me imagine that everyone in this place won one soul genuinely to Jesus Christ we will have this number of souls in one day do you think this number of salvation in one day will bring joy to the heart of the Father this is what should be behind the singing ministry this is what should be behind our evangelisms this should be the primary body in the heart of an intercessor that when you are interceding you are not just saying oh God I'm tired of this cause in my life no you are saying let the cloud that is sitting over lives and destinies and territories let it be rolled away so that there is free passage and entrance to hear the gospel Take it high for me. Let me sing a song for you. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change through me. Whoever you want to save, Lord, you can save through me. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Wherever you want to go Lord you can go through me listen I was born an evangelical and I remember those days when people would come to preach they would ask how many people want to be missionaries to go to the harvest and you would see people come out as though they were coming out for a funeral you would see responsible people I'm not just talking of some weak people who don't know what to do with their lives they would come out and you would see them cry some would hold the hands of their wives and come together and when they came that was not just an altar call for salvation it was a commitment and a vow that for the rest of my life I have signed in to see that souls go to Jesus now you make that kind of call as a man of God and you'll be left disappointed you would doubt if God really spoke to you because people are not interested in Jesus they are interested in using him I hope you know that those around Jesus did many things with Jesus others wanted to make money out of him others wanted fame they wanted their mother to negotiate positions for them but there were those who loved him sincerely out of the many people he blessed do you notice that when Jesus resurrected everybody was around him but when he was at the cross only John so not many people want to stand before the cross the cross is a difficult place it strips you of your ego it strips you of everything that represents your sense of self-worth however the power of the throne is seen on the cross 
have made a vow with my life that in life and death I will not do everything I cannot do everything but as far as it depends on me somebody must know Jesus somebody must serve Jesus somebody must learn his way and if in the process it pleases him to take me home let it be that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain let me tell you the truth if many people had this orientation they would not be in a rush to go into ministry when Jesus called people when they saw the enormity of the assignment many of them ran away go and read church history there were people men and women that Jesus called for years because they knew the kind of passion that the work of the ministry would demand they ran away look at Jonah Jonah was a prophet and when God called him he ran away Jonah was not a fake prophet he knew that destiny was upon him and that God was gracious and compassionate can I tell you the truth I have made up my mind that I will not just receive things from God I will not just be a great man of God there is a place for influence and all these things will teach them tomorrow but right now I have brought the burden of the spirit to Enugu please hear me great people of God you can start from your Jerusalem there are people who are married their husbands are going to hell living in the same house their wives are going to hell living in the same house their children are going to hell you bought a car for your child but no Jesus you gave him good education but no Jesus God forbid but one accident and that child is gone there are people you know today who left your life in January you almost don't want to think about it but the truth is that they are in hell right now because the Bible tells us that and he says for God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish that means whoever does not believe in him will perish I do not want to live in the memory that many people were allocated to my life to know Jesus and because of carelessness pride or seriousness or inefficiency I allowed them to die without Jesus and don't allow the devil make you believe that what I'm saying does not matter no one day to come to the corridors of your destiny did the rich man not have an opportunity when he saw Lazarus Lazarus did not have money but he had conviction the rich man ignored him and they all died sin too the rich man found himself in hell burning with pain and Lazarus was at the bosom of Abraham watch the request of the rich man please dip your finger in water and I would appreciate even a drop of water to quench my thirst and he said no that possibility does not exist here again you wasted your time through distraction and he said all right I know that I am doomed but please one request can you send Lazarus back to my people if they see him raise up from the dead they will believe him let him come and beg them and say stop what you are doing there are nobler pursuits in life make sure that before you start looking for money your salvation is intact make sure that before you are building the churches your salvation is intact make sure before you are sending the pastors to build branches that they are safe indeed and he said no they have the law and they have the prophets they should listen to them ladies and gentlemen please hear me I've not come to condemn I've come to stretch you in the spirit to tell you the days of nominal Christianity has come to an end that Jesus Christ is looking for people who will make the global harvest happen I prayed and I told him I said Lord you can count on me by your grace and by your spirit you can count on me to go to the nations you can count on me to take your life and your power to the nations you can count on me sometimes I look at my schedules and the things that I do I get so busy and tired I jumped into the aircraft and I was literally sleeping until the plane landed and sometimes you are tempted to say why do you stretch yourself like this one time I sent um, Baba Deboye's son I said please tell daddy he should be resting oh. and he laughed and replied me he said daddy will not rest he said he will rest in heaven there's no time to rest now he already knows that his days are not so long no matter how long so he's stretching and pushing the last push have you noticed that the fathers the older they get every other thing does not make sense again only souls 
after exploring life from pillar to post at the end of your life you will find out that all that really matters the price of one soul is equal everything in the world it says what shall it profit a man if he gains and loses walk with me let me just show you the gospel of salvation and then we'll pray hallelujah I want you to bring five people for me I just saw like light coming on five people two of them are ladies and that lady there is a grace God is raising you to be a mighty savior in your family a mighty savior mighty savior there is a grace my prayer Lord more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life From these guys wearing white, I just saw light on one person. There's a mighty impartation. There is someone you are receiving is a mighty, is a mandate that God is placing upon your head. Bring them out. Oh, bring them out. that will bring them there is a revival that will break out in this city after this conference I want you to believe me a mighty revival a revival without walls there are ancient mantles that are returning back some of you have left those cases and left those mantles it's time for it to it's time for it to come back mantles of evangelism that have been deserted by individuals, by denominations, you are picking it again. The Lord of the harvest is visiting Enugu again. The Lord of the harvest is visiting Enugu again. The Lord of the harvest is visiting Enugu again.
Hallelujah. Now listen. I want you to discern. First Corinthians 15. Give us verse 1 to 4. Please sit down if you can. When the Lord of the harvest comes, you will know he has come. You will know he has come. There is a gentleman called Shinedu. Your name is Shinedu. There is a fire of revival that is coming upon Shinedu. And the Lord is saying, you are my battle axe. You are my battle axe. I don't know where that person is. Your name is Shinedu. You are a pastor. I need to do what I'm doing first because I'm seeing like a cloud but this cloud is fire that is falling and women I don't know what it is with women in any group there is a spirit of revival please hear me I'm speaking apostolically women this is your season there is a season women a, a grace and a spirit is coming upon women this is what i'm hearing in my spirit father in the name of jesus i pray that god will find worthy vessels in you one of you i, I just saw fire resting on you just one of you let that grace come upon you now in the name of jesus christ let that grace come upon you now let that grace come upon you now. Let that grace come upon you now. I, 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 if you can i have to show you this scripture please do we have ushers so that you don't just expose especially the ladies if they are not if there's nothing you can just keep them behind there is a reason why i ask that these people come hallelujah who is ugo chuku i'm hearing the name ugo chuku ugo chuku ugo chuku you're a light-skinned gentleman What's your name? Ugo Chuku. Where are you from? Imo State. You are not from this? No, from Imo State, but I want here. to pray for you. What's your name? Huh? Come. This is the man I saw. Hallelujah. I will pray for you. Where are you from? State. You are in Enugu here? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. There is a yoke of darkness. It will take time to minister to people tomorrow, but I have to obey what God is. What do you do? I just, I just graduated. I've been, I've been waiting to know. My friend, God. there is a mighty call of God upon your life. That grace, let it come upon you now. You step into that call. Never to be weak in your spirit never to be weak in your spirit may my god begin to lead you through experiences that will prune build furnish you until you become a mighty vessel hallelujah in the name of jesus for all of you who came out let that grace rest upon you may you begin a walk with the spirit uninterrupted walk with the spirit that will transform and translate you into a mighty battle axe even by the spirit of the living god i declare this upon your life in the name of jesus amen let's go to our scripture i want to show you something please first corinthians 15 please sit
please sit because of the security situation in the land we want to finish very fast so i'm just introducing tonight now please look up this is paul articulating the gospel in a very clear term if you have never known what the gospel is this right here is the gospel moreover my goodness okay brethren he says i declare unto you the gospel watch this now i declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you he says which also ye have received i wish we could project it i want the people to see it is that possible hallelujah they call you becky becky that should be rebecca i think becky that is the name that i hear in my spirit that they call you becky in the name of jesus christ i hear the lord saying it is coming to an end it is coming to an end this is a circle of tragedy it is coming to an end i'm seeing someone you buried your brother you buried your father and the lord is telling me to rebuke the spirit of death help her in the name of jesus this is a spirit of death hanging around your family did the bible not say it is the power of god unto salvation i decree and declare in the name of jesus the one who died and rose again let that plague of death come to an end over your family hallelujah one gentleman one lady two of them will shout under the anointing please let me speak to them don't mind me let me just do my thing as the spirit of the living god one gentleman one lady one gentleman one lady this is by the influence of the spirit is a mighty grace that is coming upon that gentleman and that lady there is a man of god you are watching me everything you are seeing in this meeting the lord is going to replicate it in your life and ministry of course i know that there's a place for impartation but there is a particular man of god god is showing me this thing that your ministry will be characterized by a strange demonstration of the power of the spirit you will see the manifestation of his power and grace in a way that will surprise you in a way that will surprise you you see let me tell you this there is absolutely no reason to fake anything it's a mockery and an insult to yourself and to God when a man goes to collect uh, power or charm it is foolishness it is even a burden to your own self if you know anything about the devil there is no freedom and liberty with him there is a genuine price by the spirit you can pay to carry grace I will be showing you tomorrow what it really takes to carry the power of the spirit indeed not saying I have power showing I have power by God and for the purpose of the kingdom hallelujah let's finish the scripture first Corinthians 15 verse 1 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel watch this which I preach unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand reading to 4 verse 2 by which also ye are saved so how were they saved by the communication of the gospel he said if ye keep in memory what i preach unto you unless ye have believed in vain what then is the gospel verse 3 for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures for and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son man and creation being the object of that sacrifice and the bible declares based on the authority of scripture that any man who believes believes in what number one that jesus came as an expression of the love of the father number two 
that he came and prayed and paid the ultimate price of death shedding his blood and dying are we together now and that he resurrected by the glory of the father peter rounded up his sermon in acts chapter 2 by saying let it now be known to you O israel that this same jesus whom you have crucified have today been exalted as lord and christ pastors we must preach the gospel before we teach the word the word is only for believers who are saved please listen preaching the word rema doctrine communication of truth is only for people who have met jesus it is a waste teaching anybody who is not saved the teaching ministry was designed as you will be learning tomorrow to mature the saints to translate them to be people of stature and to be witnesses but in order of priority the first assignment of any man of God and any believer as far as being incorporated in God's program is concerned is to see to it that men meet Jesus not by blindly claiming salvation not by assuming they are saved longevity around church does not translate to salvation serving a man of God sincerely does not translate to salvation being a worker in church in fact being a sincere person does not translate to salvation. Hallelujah. And when you come out, an altar call is just a means of organizing those who are saved. The Bible lets us know according to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, that the protocol for salvation is that your heart and your lips must participate. If your heart and your lips does not participate, you are not saved. Hear what the Bible says. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart. You see that? Most people do the confession part, but in truth they don't believe. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. When you study about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it was this one striking difference that was a subject of controversy. Pharisees and Sadducees never were friends. They only came together as a force to fight Jesus. Before now, they were always at loggerheads and it was the doctrine of the resurrection. I hope you know that one of the foundational doctrine, there are six foundational doctrines according to Hebrews chapter 6 that build the believer to maturity and stature are we together one of it is the doctrine of the resurrection you are not a christian if you do not believe that jesus christ rose from the dead because the victory was at the point of resurrection resurrection was proof that he had defeated sin satan death hell and the grave if he did not raise up from the dead there would not be that statement where is oh death where is your victory oh hell where is your sting jesus rose again it is true and because he rose again all the saints shall arise remember apostle paul was teaching the church in thessalonica and he was comforting them and teaching them as touching the destiny of those who die and he let them know that when people die in the faith we do not say they are dead we say they have slept because when men sleep they wake up so the concept of the resurrection is what changed the idea for a Christian from death to sleep. That those who sleep, sleep at night and those who sleep have an assurance that they will wake up. The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept, Psalm 3, and I awake for the Lord sustained me. So that one day, watch this now, a day is going to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish I had the time. I would have taught you the seven pillars of the Christian faith there are seven pillars that represent the Christian faith we may differ across many divides we represent different denominations here with the honor to our various beliefs and there might be differences here and there but there are seven pillars that must not shift if you do not believe that you are not a Christian one of it is the incarnation that Jesus was God and is God and came born of the Virgin Mary you must believe in the incarnation you must believe in his earth work 
that he lived upon the earth he walked although a man he lived a sinless life born of mary and born of the spirit you must believe in the fact that he came to represent the purposes of god he came as an advocate there are three major reasons why jesus came to the earth number one jesus came to the earth as a correction of our understanding about an unknown god because until Jesus manifested, men did not know God. There was no widespread manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So the dead inhabitants had to depend on what the prophets told them God was. And they made a lot of mistakes. There were gaps in their knowledge. They credited many things that was not God to God. Because we see in part and we prophesy in part. So Jesus came as a manuscript. He came as a marking script correcting the prior idea that we had about God so everything the prophets claim that God was we will reference it against the life and the earth work of Jesus and it now gives us a scriptural basis to edit what they told us God is for instance when the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love you have a right to doubt it until you see it proven in the life of Jesus how did he respond to people the Bible will say he was moved with compassion based on Jesus we can say those prophets were right as far as touching that statement is concerned are we together now when you hear things like a lying spirit came from God now we look at Jesus and Jesus said Satan was a liar and the father of all them that lie so we know that based on Jesus we need to correct that thing the prophet said that is how we judge scripture we judge scripture using the lens of Jesus are we together the second reason why Jesus came was as a pattern man a model to the believer that will come out as a result of his resurrection we are products and fruits of the resurrection in truth we are not I know it's Old Testament New Testament but the believer is not really the New Testament as we say we are products of it are we together now it was on account of the resurrection it was the Holy Spirit that birthed our dispensation God for us God with us Emmanuel when Jesus walked upon the earth now God in us the dispensation of the Holy Spirit began from Acts chapter 2 and will end finally when believers are raptured in fact what you call rapture is the temporary exiting of the Holy Spirit together with the believers because we are bound with him we have to go to that is the reason why the <laughs> the Bible defines light as the world without us are we together now it's very important for you to understand this from the day the Holy Ghost came to the earth he has not left earth he cannot leave it's inseparable he shall be with you and shall be in you he's with us the Holy Spirit has the official status of the Lord of the harvest he is the overseer over this global harvest this is the reason why we know that in spite of our frailty the mission will not fail not because of us but because of the builder the Lord of the harvest are we learning now so Jesus came as a model the Bible says looking unto Jesus he calls him the author and the finisher of our faith he came to model to the believer what it means to be approved of God what it means to please the father because the father had this to say about Jesus that he was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased the third reason why Jesus came was as a mediator that's the one that most believers know as a mediator he came through the, the penalty of death and the shedding of his blood that he will call many sons into glory reconciling us back to the father why to give us access to receive righteousness the life of god and eventually the holy spirit you find that in galatians chapter 3 i believe from verse 8 it says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is every man that hanged upon the tree that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles verse 8 he says um that to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith i'm not sure my media person is working with me verse 8 you go to eight huh am i right on that find it for me yeah eight nine ten i think somewhere along that line christ that redeemed us from the curse of the law 
so to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith nobody has access to the holy spirit until you have righteousness equal to that of jesus and that qualifies you now to have the life of god even the spirit of god this is very important i'm saying this because it is important for us to know and understand that if we must be effective if jesus christ must be revealed in any good state the first part of call is a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning a restoration of the mandate of soul winning that every church every mission agency indeed every believer we must know that we are principally saddled with the assignment of seeing to it that souls are saved beginning from our families to schools to everywhere and the bible lets us know that in the mind of god every unsaved person is called a harvest a harvest that is already ripe that if for any reason there is difficulty in gathering the harvest the problem is not from the harvest the problem is the quality of the laborers you must understand the gospel the gospel is not man's idea the gospel does not demand creativity in terms of communicating it it is fixed the truth there are exact that jesus came he died are we together he resurrected by the glory of the father and the bible tells us that while we are giving witness to that truth the holy spirit is ever there to back us that every kind of backing you need to prove that what you are saying is not a lie god is ready to coordinate the resources of heaven god is ready to coordinate the power even if it is the powers of the age to come if it will help to enhance your communication of the gospel that god's hand is not restrained as far as making it available to you is concerned now the preaching of the gospel will demand three kinds of people this is my last communication and then we'll pray number one as far as the global harvest is concerned there are three kinds of people god is looking for number one they are called prophetic intercessors as far as the global harvest is concerned this is the strategy that has been used by god from time immemorial if you want to see a widespread manifestation of salvation number one prophetic intercessors the assignment of these people is to pray the program of god to come please help them my god ushers please be around so that if anybody falls so that we manage them and then we don't have any casualties hallelujah let me have your attention please are we together so the bible says look at me please that i sought for a man i sought for a man i sought for a man there are many many people please look at me there are many many people god is looking for many many people that god is counting on seeking for a man a man that he will use as a prophetic intercessor you want to see the darkness over enugu give way may god find men who know how to pray not just prayer for themselves intercession demands that you look away from your personal needs and focus on the program of god are we together now prophetic intercessors i believe that there are people here who god has already raised and there are yet many people male and female educated and uneducated young and old all together i'm praying that somebody by the spirit will make himself a willing vessel from tonight that i will be a prophetic intercessor that you will carry enugu as a project and keep it before your prayer altar and say father maranatha let jesus come let revival come let your program be birthed one of the assignments of prophetic intercession is to birth and to sustain god's program there is no genuine revival that is birthed and sustained without a robust prophetic intercessory ministry he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray luke 18 and verse 1 and not to faint enugu you must trust god to have men of prayer 
men of prayer fervent and effectual prayer that you make it a duty to intercede for all the men of God in this city you make it a duty to intercede for all the programs you hear that a crusade is happening don't say it's not my church if it is Jesus it is your business the moment the name of the G of Jesus will be mentioned it has become your business immediately and the least you can do is to pray father the vessel who will be used here move in power through that person that the gospel is communicated with precision and with accuracy in Acts chapter 4 that was a prayer of the apostles that you grant by the spirit that miracles be wrought in the name of your holy son to the end that Jesus be revealed and the moment they prayed the Bible says the place shook Enugu there must be people who pray gentlemen and ladies be people of prayer not as an emergency response system you must learn to pray hold on to the horns of the altar pray away curses pray away darkness pray away the blindfolding layers that are covering potential prophets potential apostles the spirits that are stunting churches and not allowing for growth and expansion for so many to come and be transformed that becomes your project and you pray it until you see like Elijah a manifestation of that which has been finished in the spirit number two the second group of people who will be needed for this global harvest are those who are sent to the field sent to the field you can call them evangelists you can call them preachers everybody who must declare that message how shall they hear except they be a preacher a preacher is not just one who is standing with a mic on a pulpit a preacher is one who is determined to declare jesus to the nations you can preach by singing you can preach by declaring you can take advantage of social media platforms to articulate jesus to as many and if it is one person who is hearing you god is still grateful that you took a step can i tell you the price of one soul is the blood of Jesus and if you are to save everybody that is unsaved it will happen one by one by one by one a little statistics to challenge you there are only 2.8 billion professing Christians on earth out of the over 8 billion people I don't know how many professing Christians are in Enugu I don't know how many professing Christians are in the, are in the southeast I'm not sure there is an exact statistics for that but whatever it is I can tell you that it is a wake-up call for all of us 2.6 billion professing Christians out of 8, 8 billion inhabitants upon the earth we still have a long way going and it may interest you to know that from a statistical standpoint the fastest growing religion in the world is not the Christian faith unfortunately The harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Among the many strategies the believer was given, he left us the creativity of inventing superior strategies of communicating Jesus. When the gospel was given to the apostles, there was no social media. Isn't it amazing that through the power of platforms like YouTube, I am here speaking and yet I can speak to the whole nation. I can speak to the entire globe from one position this is a profound advantage this is what the prophet saw by revelation as a flying scroll he says what seest thou he was talking about the power of technology in being able to capture the gospel he could only call it a flying scroll the power of media media was only known to be a book but now he's seen a scroll that can go on air hallelujah prophetic intercessors and then a vast army of people who will see to it that everyone they can find is saved are you ready for the last people the last group that must be involved to make the global harvest come to pass are financiers advancing the purposes of God as far as communicating the gospel is concerned is very expensive you know that by now you hear me say the name of Jesus is very heavy that it takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see 
I was teaching my people on Sunday and we explored the scripture where men were given money to say that Jesus did not resurrect. Satan is still paying people till today to say Jesus is not risen. Financial resources are very powerful when they are used properly. And there are many of you here. I'm speaking to Easterners. Do you know why God gave you a unique grace? Watch this. Let me give you one prophetic word and we'll pray. Do you know why God invested the creativity and the ability to produce wealth in the East? It is because there is an assignment, corporately speaking, as far as funding the program of God. People will fund the program of God from across the globe, but there is a sound of kingdom financing that should come from the East that God is yet to hear. And there are people that God is raising. It is not about being a businessman. You listen to what I'm telling you. Many do not even know why they are business inclined. They just know that I have a passion for business and I'm doing well. I'm exporting, I'm importing. I can tell you behind that is not just to gather money and build houses. Mm -mm. Because a time will come when an end time shofar will sound. And God will say, where are the people who have placed resources in their hands? Let's make this happen now. And one man will rise like a nation and say, as far as soul winning in the East is concerned, here are my resources. It took Joseph of Arimathea donating his grave, donating his sepulcher for Jesus to be buried. Otherwise, there would not be resurrection. Eastern as hear me, you have a prophetic assignment in this end time. The intelligence God gave you as far as transacting wealth is concerned it is not just a heritage that God gave a people like that it is for a purpose and very soon the one who gave you that grace is going to come and say what did you do with the five talent I gave you what did you do with the two talent I gave you I bless this family with an uncommon ability to do business every one of the six people have become a millionaire now I have come where is the five talent have you turned it to ten because there is need for some of those talents to go to the crusade ground there is need for structures and systems to be built as far as souls are concerned so if you find yourself doing business with this understanding you will now know that it's more than making money it is a mandate you are fulfilling this is the one problem I have with the prosperity message if it is not pro kingdom and a vision is not given it now becomes a marketing of flesh carnality that leads people towards destruction what brings perspective to the message of wealth and abundance is when it is connected to this purpose of kingdom come ask every man of god here seated and they will tell you there are ministries here the running cost of church just on sunday or one week a week probably would start the building projects of many people and yet this is what happens only God can tell the amount of financial investment that went in for this program please do not downplay the importance of financial resources when it enters the heart of air the hand of someone whose heart is stayed on seeing that souls are saved hallelujah God is counting on you God is counting on me and I don't know about you but I vowed by the Spirit of God that I will not fail that by the Spirit of the Living God as far as it depends on me the hymn writer says I'll be a true soldier he says I'll die at my post he will come and find me there diligently serving diligently serving I'll be here loving you all of the days of my life I'll be here serving you all of the days of my life. Now I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. We are going to pray and I want you to participate in this prayer. There are two things that will happen to you and then we'll wrap up tonight. The first thing that you are going to pray for is you are going to cry 
for an impartation of the grace to be an active part of this global harvest it is called global because everywhere in the world is a potential field but you can start from the east hear me my precious people nobody will come and spearhead the gospel and salvation in your territory above and beyond those who are inhabitants of the territory god must find a people god must find a great people who will pray who will speak and who will give as far as that soul winning as far as that revival in as much as it is true that revival is centered on believers when you study revival revival is really for believers because a man who is not saved does not need revival revival is for people who have lost their fire and fervency but then it spills over and it affects unbelievers too there's gonna be a great awakening over the east there's gonna be a great revival in your land there's gonna be a great awakening and everyone who calls on jesus they will be saved now look at me ladies and gentlemen i'm going to call on a group of people right now there's a crowd of people here watching me listening to me thousands of others by way of internet television and the media space you are in this place and you are saying apostle while i heard you speak the truth is that i have not made this commitment for jesus i cannot say i am saved genuinely i can say i have gone to church and i am in church i can even say i am a worker in church perhaps i am even a man of god but i have never sincerely made this decision number two there are those who are saying i need to rededicate my life sincerely i came out for an altar call but the truth is i did not even understand what i was doing i only felt emotional after a well presented sermon and i responded thus but now on hearing you speak i know that i need to start afresh i'm going to count one to five and i don't want you to sit dilly darling this is a matter of your destiny that wherever you are across the balcony and here seated i count one to five and you are saying apostle please give me a chance to make it right with jesus i want you to give me the honor of leading you to jesus genuinely leave your seat and run come and stand here i begin my counting now one two genuine salvation you may cry but come Come. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Oh, our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sin. We pray one more time. Father, you are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sins. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many. Enugu, are you celebrating a mighty harvest for Jesus? And I tell you, listen to me. Even if it were only one soul, one, even if it were only one gentleman or one young lady that came and stood here, 
it will still be worth the clap because the price of every one of these people is the blood of Jesus now please I want you to listen to me my precious brothers and sisters first I want to salute you some of you may be the first to make this decision in your family some of you may be the first to make this consciously some of you while you are standing here the devil is condemning you and telling you everything you have done and not done and become and not become no there were two thieves that were hanging with Jesus on the cross one acknowledged he was a thief and Jesus looked at him and said this day you will be with me in paradise the other one even though he was on, a cro on the cross he did not accept and admit and open up his heart to receive hear me the Bible says as many who will come to him I see some of you cry do not be ashamed of your tears this is why Jesus put this program together young and old male and female I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer for some of you you've said it before but not with understanding for some of you you are saying it now with understanding I want you to lift your right hand high let Jesus see you lifted high as a sign of surrender and please shout this from the depth of your heart Jesus is here take your your eyes beyond Joshua Selman and see the one who loved you and died for you standing here self tell me Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I declare that I love you with all my heart I declare that I believe in you with all my heart I believe that you are the Son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of satan sin hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i receive eternal life i am a child of god i go for whatever and backward never keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones this is a mighty harvest coming from the southeast lord i am praying in the name of jesus based on the authority of scripture that their sins be forgiven this moment in the name of jesus christ and i decree and declare that every power that has kept you in sin every power that has kept you bound you are released from it now in the matchless name of Jesus based on the authority of Scripture I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus mighty name we pray now um, there's a crowd of people here I do not know if you will be attended to this night the usual the usual custom would be to lead you to a place where counselors will be able to talk with you i'm not sure that might be able to hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you